Welcome to Imarticus Learning, where we help you become the best version of yourself in the data science world. If you're a fresher gearing up for your first data science interview, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the top 30 data science interview questions that will help you stand out and land that dream job. Ready to impress your interviewers? Let's get started. Why are you interested in a career in data science and what skills do you bring to the field? Let's start by discussing your motivation for entering data science. Employers often want to know what drives your interest in this field and what skills you've developed, whether it's coding, analytical thinking, or problem solving that make you a strong candidate. What is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? Next, let's clear up the confusion between supervised and unsupervised learning. Imagine supervised learning as a teacher guiding a student with label data, like showing pictures of cats and dogs and telling the student which is which. On the other hand, unsupervised learning is like a group of kids left to figure out things on their own, finding patterns without labels. Think clustering similar animals together. Fun, right? What is overfitting in machine learning? Now let's talk about overfitting. Picture a model that gets so good at memorizing the training data that it fails spectacularly when faced with new data. It's like a student who memorizes answers without understanding the concepts. Great for a pop quiz, but not for real world applications. What is a confusion matrix? A confusion matrix might sound complex, but it's actually super helpful. It's a table that helps us evaluate how well our classification model is performing by comparing actual versus predicted values. Think of it as a report card that highlights where you excel and where you need improvement. Explain the difference between recall and precision. Recall and precision often get mixed up, but here's the deal. Precision is like a sharpshooter who only wants to hit the target when they're sure, while recall is like a dog chasing after every thrown stick. Recall focuses on capturing as many true positives as possible, even if it means some mistakes. What is feature selection? Feature selection is all about finding the right variables to use in your model. Imagine you're packing for a trip. You wouldn't bring your entire wardrobe, right? You'll pick the essentials that will help you shine. What is bias variance trade-off? Understanding the bias variance trade-off is crucial. It's like balancing two computing forces. Bias is a simple model that misses the mark while variance is like a model that is overly complex and gets lost in noise. Finding that sweet spot is key to creating a robust model. What is the difference between classification and regression? Classification and regression are both supervised learning techniques. Think of classification as deciding whether an email is spam or not, while regression is predicting house prices based on various features. It's like picking your favorite movie genre versus estimating how much a ticket costs. Explain cross-validation. Cross-validation is like having multiple rounds in a game to ensure that you're on top of your skills. By splitting the data into several folds, we can test how well our model performs on different subsets, ensuring it generalizes well to unseen data. Its practice makes perfect. What is the role of a cost function in machine learning? A cost function is like your personal trainer in the gym measuring how far you are from your goal. It evaluates the error between predicted and actual values. And the aim is to minimize the cost to boost your model's accuracy. What are the types of variables in a data set? Variables in a data set are like ingredients in a recipe. You've got numeric variables and categorical variables. Each type requires a unique approach for data processing. What is logistic regression? Logistic regression is your go-to for binary classification tasks. It estimates the probability of an input belonging to a class, like whether or not you will enjoy a rom-com based on your love for popcorn. If the probability is high enough, you're in for a good time. What is the center limit theorem? The center limit theorem is a key concept in statistics. It tells us that no matter the original distribution, the average of a large enough sample will always approach a normal distribution. It's like making a smoothie. No matter what fruit you start with, the blended result is always deliciously smooth. Explain clustering in data science. Clustering groups data points based on similarity, like organizing your closet by color. Common methods include k-means and hierarchical clustering. It's all about making sense of chaos. What is the difference between data normalization and data standardization? Normalization scales data to a range of 0, 1, 
while standardization transforms data to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. It's like adjusting the volume on your speakers to make sure everything sounds just right. Explain the difference between bagging and boosting. Bagging reduces variance by creating multiple models from random subsets of data, like building a team where everyone has their unique strengths. Boosting, on the other hand, is like training together. Each new model learns from the mistakes of the previous one to improve overall performance. What is the importance of the learning rate in machine learning? The learning rate controls how quickly our model adapts during training. A small learning rate is like a slow cooker. Takes time but yields delicious results. A large learning rate? Think microwave. Fast, but you might end up with a burnt snack. What is the difference between Python and R in data science? Python and R are like the dynamic duo of data science. Python is versatile with extensive libraries for machine learning, while R is the go-to for statistical analysis and visualization. If Python is like a Swiss Army knife, R is your specialized tool for heavy lifting in statistics. What are your common data visualization libraries in Python? When it comes to data visualizations in Python, you've got some fantastic tools. Matplotlib is like the foundation. Seaborn adds a splash of style, and Plotly brings interactivity. Together, they help transform your data into stunning visual stories. What is the significance of data cleaning? Data cleaning is crucial. It's like prepping ingredients before cooking. Without clean data, your analysis might taste a bit off. From handling missing values to removing duplicates, a clean data set is essential for effective analysis. How do you handle missing data? Handling missing data can be tricky, but there are various approaches. You can fill in the gaps with mean or median values, or even better, use advanced methods like interpolation. It's like patching a hole in your favorite sweater. There are several ways to keep it looking good. What is time series analysis? Time series analysis is all about understanding data points collected or recorded at specific time intervals. Think of it like watching the stock market. You're observing trends over time to make predictions. It's like tracking the weather to plan your next picnic. What are ensemble methods? Ensemble methods combine multiple models to improve predictions. It's like assembling a superhero team. Each hero brings unique powers, and together they tackle challenges more effectively. Random Forest and Ada Boost are popular choices in this space. What is deep learning? Deep learning is a subset of machine learning that uses neural networks with many layers. Think of it as the brain of artificial intelligence. It's great for complex tasks like image recognition and natural language processing, and it's taking the data science world by storm. Explain what a neural network is. A neural network mimics the way our brain works, consisting of interconnected nodes. Each connection has a weight that adjusts as the network learns. It's like building a complex highway system where each route leads to improved understanding and predictions. What is natural language processing? Natural language processing, or NLP, helps machines understand human language. From chatbots answering your questions to sentiment analysis determining how people feel about a product, NLP bridges the gap between human communication and machine understanding. How do you evaluate the performance of a model? Evaluating a model's performance is key to ensuring its effectiveness. Common metrics include accuracy, precision, recall, and the F1 score. Think of these metrics as your model's report card, showing where it excels and where it needs improvement. What is the ROC curve? The ROC curve, or receiver's operating characteristic curve, helps visualize a model's performance at various threshold levels. It plots the true positive rate against the false positive rate. The closer the curve is to the top left corner, the better the model performs. It's like aiming for the bullseye in archery. What are the challenges of working with big data? Working with big data presents unique challenges. Think of it as managing a massive library. You've got to deal with the sheer volume of data, its variety, and the velocity at which it's generated. Tackling these challenges requires robust tools and strategies. What advice would you give to freshers starting their data science career? Lastly, if you're just starting your data science career, my advice would be to keep on learning and practicing. Engage in projects, participate in hackathons, and don't hesitate to ask questions. The data science community is welcoming and full of opportunities. That's a wrap on the top 30 data science interview questions for freshers. We hope this video helps you prepare and feel confident about your interviews. 
If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Imarticus Learning for more insightful content. Until next time, keep exploring and learning.